Okay, we're back here live at the Dell Storage Forum, and I'm Dave Vellante with Wikibon.org. I'm here with Stu Miniman, also of Wikibon.org, and Nick Allen, also of Wikibon.org. So we've got the Wikibon crew here. This is great to have you guys on. Nick Allen, for those of you who don't know, is probably one of the sharpest storage analysts in the business. Um, very experienced, was a lead analyst at Gartner for a number of years, has been a major contributor to the Wikibon community, and is really our go-to guy on understanding technology, how it applies, how it fits, uh, what users are doing, uh, what's real and what's you know, BS. So, um, Nick, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for so, the compliment. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Um, Dell Storage Forum, you weren't at the last one. This is definitely a step up. Um, last one was good, this is better. Uh, you know, good customer vibe. It's, you know, Dell's clearly a relevant player in, uh, in storage, but I wanted to ask you, what are some of the more interesting things you've seen here, and then let's get into the discussion. Yeah, well, I heard there were 1,200 attendees, so that's, yeah. you know, that's way up, um, and I would expect more next year, but what, what I spent this afternoon doing was examining the Hermes project, which, which Dell has been talking about, which is to take flash memory on the server and unify it with their tiered storage. Um, and I learned about their Flash Express product, which is actually quite different than the Fusion I.O. And, and, and similar products. The Fusion I.O. product, the PCI card, uh, pretty much with storage on it, and, and most of the PCI SSD implementations have the storage on it, and therefore serviceability becomes a major issue. If you have to replace the drives, you got to open up the server and those kinds of things. Turns out, Earlier this year, they announced a, uh, their Flash Express product, which takes a PCI extension card and connects it up to four different drives that are um, ex externally mounted from, from the server. Which that gives them the serviceability, it also gives them a, a bigger choice in, in SSDs. And Dell has been working um, closely with the SSD form factor folks to define uh, not only how you plug it in, but also to put four lanes of PCI Express as well as a SATA or SAS connector on it, which gives them the, uh, the utmost flexibility. Um, and then I did some research on RNA networks that they acquired uh, last, year, last year, I believe. And uh, while there's a lot of uh, information available under NDA, it, if you look at what RNA networks provided, which was originally they virtualized main memory, RAM memory. Um, and you can take memory from many servers and, and uh, share, it to, to share it together and dedicate it and so on and so forth. And, and if you look at what they had, um, well, well, first of all, Dell is also saying that, that Hermes will be read-write cache, right, which is something uh, the likes of EMC doesn't have. They talk about it, but, but they don't have it. But if the RNA had the, the pooling, they had a high-speed cache area network, if, if, if for want of a better term, which could either be InfiniBand or 10 gigabit Ethernet. Um, and they had this read-write cache coherency problem all worked out. So one can infer fairly easily that Dell has the intellectual property now to possibly uh, beat EMC uh, in, in the race to a unified flash in the server, flash tier one, tier two, threes on, on, on the external array. It is a race, isn't it? I yeah. mean, uh, it's pretty clear with that functions shifting back, the, 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 the source of power is moving back toward the server with this new flash hierarchy and everybody's really, you know, hopping on that bandwagon. Now, now Dell, I just want to clarify something you said about uh, Fusion I.O. So Dell, still resells Fusion yeah, I.O., yeah. Um, but it sounds like it's called Express? It's <laughs> Express Flash. Expe Express Flash uh, is, is, it competes in a way. Um, it doesn't obviously have the atomic rights, I right, presume. Right. So those are applications that are, you know, use cases that are unique to the Fusion I.O. capability, but in terms of supporting Dell's end-to-end -end vision, it's a key starting point for them, it sounds like. Well, it's an absolute starting point, and they have products products that's shipping, and, and from what I understand, it's doing as, at least as well as the Fusion I.O., if, if, if not better. Um, they have a, a demo that, that they're showing of it, but you can get the spec sheets, you can download it, and, and you know, it's a real product, it's been shipping 
for, I think for a couple of weeks now. So it's memory, so the RNA piece is memory pooling as well as some additional flash functionality? Well, no, it, right? it was just memory pooling. Yeah, okay. Okay, but you can easily extend the algorithms and the cache coherency and, and um, even with atomic rights, Dell is working closely with um, um, non-volatile memory express org to map SCSI commands simply and easily and quickly onto the PCI lanes to get the high speed going. So, so Dell is, is, as opposed to some of its competitors, I would say is very interested in standardization, in more openness or more, more choice, um, and they're putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah, so um, we've obviously seen this flash emergence in the last couple of years, and, um, and you could sort of see this opportunity bubbling, although a lot of people seem to be asleep at the switch, but now everybody's awake to this. You're seeing big acquisitions. Um, it seems that there's got to be software to hold it all together. That seems to be the key. You, and I've used the analogy of the, you know, the Veritas for Flash right. um, as emerging. Can, can one of the whales do that, or do you need an independent entity to do that? It sounds like Dell's really emphasizing openness, so maybe that's part of the equation, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, they're management? opener. I, don't, I, th I think choice is a better word than, mm -hmm. than, than open, that, that as opposed to some of the other products where they don't qualify three or four or five different SSDs. Okay. You know, Dell can do that, and, and they've got a mechanical architecture, and always, People forget about how important mechanics are in, in storage subsystems and servers, and you know, getting them cooled and powered. And, and, and uh, you know, we saw the demos yesterday, of the, or the examples of shrinking the, the server components down. And you asked that very good question today of Pete Kors, you know, um, in terms of like how you deal with shock and shock vibration, shock and vibration, and, and, and cool. top power and cooling. So and he was like, "Well, it wasn't easy." <laughs> you know, it, and yeah. And yeah. And, and people forget about that, and, and that, that's the kind of the groundwork that Dell's, part of the groundwork that Dell's been doing, is just a mechanical piece that gives more choice um, and more serviceability. Because if the SSD fails, you just go to the outside of the, uh, of the, the, the unit and unscrew it and pull it, pull it out, as opposed to having to open up the server. Right. Um, I wanted to talk, I want to ask your opinion on integration. We've commented here all week that Dell seems to be emphasizing integration, what I'm calling integration more so. So they acquire all these companies and they're, even uh, Darren Thomas said, you know, they acquire uh, uh, capabilities from Apashore on things like compression and dedupe, and eventually they'll jam the Ocarina stuff in there and they'll jettison some of the other IP in favor of that end-to-end -end approach. So it seems like they're emphasizing integration more so than some of the other companies that we talked to. What's your take on that? Is that an illusion or is that real? Um, well, let's put it in context. There's not a lot of old legacy storage subsystems that they have to continue to maintain and integrate into whatever their, their new, new architecture is. Mm -hmm. there, ha there are, however, a lot of recent acquisitions, all of disparate companies, from Compellent to, um, to e Equalogic to Aperture to... Oh, um, Ocarina. Exanet, o Ocarina. Ocarina and, 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 and Exanet. Um, well, the message that I'm hearing is, number one, we have a vision. Uh, number two, we have a commitment. Um, and number three, we're executing on it. Dell never particularly executes real quickly. Um, but I think, you know, what they, what, what they, the roadmaps that they've, that they've painted for us are, are very cogent and um, they understand the customer wants simplicity. And, and that's one of their messages here at, at the conference is the simplicity. And they're marching towards it. And, and in fact, you know, the message that we're listening to the customer is coming through loud and clear, mm. but I don't know that I heard that message three, four years ago. No, I think you're right. We heard, you know, low margin, assemble business, things like that. And, yeah, and, yeah. And so there's, there's, there's a completely value. different tone coming out of Dell versus a couple of years ago, I think. Well, it's interesting. I asked the question of one of the executives uh, uh, specifically about, you know, the impact of being in the storage business, owning your own IP, and and, and delivering higher margins, and his response was, look, it's all about, to us, it's all about the customer. I mean, it's definitely very much on message. Now, we know at the back end, and Wall Street knows it's, a lot of it is about the margins, right? And being yeah. able to control your own destiny. And I think Dell is dangerous, because Dell lives off of PC margins, and now we've, they're selling 
their own storage. They don't have to split it, you know, the profits with EMC anymore. So, you know, anything north of, you know, whatever gross margins are on PCs, which are pretty slim, I don't know, 20%, low 20s, or maybe even less. 17, maybe. Yeah, right. So, anything north of that, now here you got EMC living off of 50, 60% gross margins, you know, EMC, NetApp, uh, others. Um, you know, Dell can be very happy at high yeah, but, 20s. But, but, know, the model, the model, but the model's different, okay? EMC, uh, percent of R&D, 10, 15 percent. And, and they proudly committed to that. Okay, yeah. and they can, okay, you know, afford that at 50 percent margins. Dell historically has run at uh, R&D at two and three percent. But they've used the cash that they've generated to, to, to make the acquisitions and now they use that same two to three percent to do the integration. Yeah, if well, I can expound on that a little bit. If I, you know, I look at the big guys out there, having come from EMC, you know, look at HP, look at IBM, there's that tension between the invented here, we're going to do the internal innovation, we want to incent our engineers to be able to grow versus... There's you know, no tension as, here. There's no tension <laughs> here. <laughs> right. it, it, it's a small group, management is all on the same page. We heard Darren say, you know, he gets three guys together once a month with the 24 architects, pull them from all the geos together, together and work on it. You know, you just don't have that happen at the big companies. They've got big engineering teams all kind of marching towards their pieces. Strategically, they try to pull them all together, but there, there's, there's lots of different playbooks that they're playing off of. There's different schedules. There's different development cycles. So, you know, as you said, Nick, you know, Dell's percentage of R&D, you know, a lot of it's relatively new to Dell, and these are kind of the entrepreneurial spirits here. They, they, they've got a good team atmosphere if you talk to the guys in Austin, uh, and, you know, they, they seem to work together pretty well, uh, as opposed to, we've, we've seen lots of tension but in the converged space as to who owns that at, at some of the bigger companies. Yeah, he, he showed that slide today where he had this virtuous circle. Number one was acquire, number two was integrate, and number three was innovate. And what they meant by innovate was innovate with the customer user experience. Right. You know, how they service things, um, you I, know, how I, they fulfill. I, I, I also recall years ago when I was at Gartner when Dell's model was no longer working, and, and Michael Dell came in and presented some grand plan, and the, the Gardner analyst just totally beat him up, and he basically left with his, his tail between his legs. But about a year later, he came back with this build-to-order, um, low-cost, so on and so forth, and, and grew the Dell back up, and then of course he left, and then now he's back, so I wonder whether, I, don't, I gotta believe there's some Michael Dell in here too. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I was commenting earlier that, and Nick, you remember the East Coast mini computer companies that you know that they were, got left in the wake of the, the PC era. DG Prime, Wang, uh, DEC, Apollo, they all got crushed because they missed the whole business model shift. And it seems, and, and guys like Michael Dell destroyed them. And it seems like people like Michael Dell and I guess Steve Ballmer to a great extent uh, have seen that movie before and I think take great pride in not becoming remnants of the past. I mean, Data General, they had tons of cash in the balance sheet. They owned all this real estate. I mean, even Sun Microsystems, you know, the once great Sun couldn't figure out how to remain independent. And so I think, uh, you're right, I think a lot of that credit goes to Michael Dell orchestrating um, this transformation and storage has been a big, big part of that. Um, what, in your opinion, though, does Dell need to do better to become more relevant? and more dominant in storage? Well, I'm a big iron guy, and so, you know, I want to see all of these products be truly enterprise class and be sold to the big enterprises. And yeah, they're going in there, but their, their focus is still SMB and, and below. So, so one of the things to take on the EMCs of the world, so on and so forth, I think they got to continue what they're doing um, would be able to leverage that upwards as well. Yeah, well, and, and of course, interestingly, they, that's maybe in part by design, maybe in wholly by design. We asked Darren Thomas last year, you know, what's different about Dell? I mean, what do you want to be known for? He goes, we want to be number one in small and mid-sized enterprise storage, period. You know, and so almost, and I asked him, are you, I mean, you're giving yeah, up on the high is, end? Well, what, yeah. 
But with the cloud and, yeah. and with moving applications everywhere, what is SMB? I mean, does it exist anymore? Does it just live, yeah. in, live in the and, cloud? And SMB, you can sell SMB storage to large companies and you know, <laughs> within divisions. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not sure I buy into that one. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and, and you know, Dell's bought a lot of software pieces and they're, they're trying to mature their software strategy and we think that's where the, the differentiation is in the marketplace. If you talk about kind of all the hardware pieces, you got to be able to orchestrate it, you got to be able to automate it, uh, and Dell's still maturing that model. So, although you know they they are now on, on I, I think all of their storage servers using Dell hardware, yeah. which is a shift. Right, and so um, so their attach rates should be very good. Yep. Um, it's interesting. I mean, no, I mean, I mean the server, the, the processors that they use in their storage boxes, right, are because of the acquisitions they weren't necessarily Dell built. But now they are common uh, hardware across the server storage. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, and Dell's Dell's really smart about its supply chain, no doubt. Um, it's interesting. You look back, you know, f I don't know, three, four years ago, EMC and Dell had this great relationship. EMC, it was great for EMC, Stu. I mean, you were you were there at the time, and EMC was making a lot of money through the Dell channel, and mm -hmm. Dell, you know, got into storage conveniently, didn't have to spend money on R and D. But that, you know. It, just to shift gears a second, I, I think the Aperture, you know, we've been saying backup is broken, who's going to yeah. fix it? And Dell has just been a, a partner and a reseller of existing uh, data protection applications, and they finally bit the bullet. And they finally took one, a very advanced one, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Uh, and they, they got something they can they can put in put into their channel that is, that is uh, or will be absolutely Dell. Yeah, I mean, the whole backup is broken and data protection as a service is a fix. That's what, that's what Aposure is all about. But interestingly, somebody was citing some ESG data that suggested a very large proportion of customers are, are doing snapshots as part of the backup. I was actually surprised at how many of the customers we talked to here, Stu, are, are doing that. I mean, I love it. You know, I think it's the right approach. Um, and Dell seems to be leaning there. I know NetApp with SyncSort and Commvault is doing some interesting things. EMC, at EMC World, Nick, Stephen Manley stood up and that was EMC's whole vision. And of course, Stephen Manley used to be the CTO over at NetApp, and so, of one of their, of their data protection group. So he's brought that vision to EMC, which of course you know EMC, they're going to freeze the market and, and they're going to do a really good job of transitioning from the sort of Avamar, data domain, legato, stovepipes into this data protection as a service, and I think they'll do very well with it. But it looks like Dell is there today. Unfortunately for the company where I first started hearing about this, Falcon Store, um, they run the risk of getting you know buried by the big guys, you know, and because uh, once the big guys start talking about it, I haven't heard HP talk about it much. Not sure IBM's talking about it much, but certainly. Dell, NetApp, EMC are all putting forth now that vision of using snapshots and continuous data protection as a way to eliminate the backup window and provide data protection as a service across the application portfolio where you can dial down or dial up the RPO based on requirements. So, another observation on Dell. Five years ago, were they painting a vision? In storage, no. In anything. In any, yeah, consumer. <laughs> well, I mean, our consumer, and we're going to lower yeah, the prices work, and so on right. and so forth. But yeah. in terms of, of listening to the customers, turning that into a vision, then turning it into a product plan, they didn't have that. Out of this conference, they certainly have. No, oh, and that's right. And and I think that goes back to your point about leadership. I mean, you know, his name is on the box, and and Michael Dell is, you know, always been very customer focused. So yeah, I. I think it's a good vision. Actually, you know, it was, it was interesting. Um, Terry McClure from ESG was dinging him a little bit on the vision in terms of not laying out what the future of the data center looks like, so maybe there could be a little bit more, than, more of that, but I think the message is really simple and clear that you know, old legacy stuff is hard and complex to use. We're jettisoning that and we're going you know, whole hog on simple, easy, integrated, and we've got all the piece parts, and um, we're going to make it work. So, 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 so you Dave, don't have to. If we look at the kind of the big trends we've been talking about. You know, on the infrastructure side, you know, virtualization. Dell's got a great story. Uh, their scale out architectures, their recent acquisitions, the, the the two big mega trends that we talked about about cloud and big data. Uh, I think Dell's got a decent story on the cloud side. Definitely, they've got kind of the 
private cloud infrastructure put together, uh, have some solutions that kind of get to the hybrid cloud, and they're even building public clouds. Big data though, it seems Dell's a little bit late to the market, uh, you know, probably because of where their sweet spot is, is the kind of the mid and the low range, it's not hitting them yet, but you know, what, what, what's your take on that? I Dave? mean, my take is big data is a software challenge, and I think that it's going to probably come out of a different part of, the leadership for big data is going to come out of a, a different part of Dell, it's very clear to me, in just observing the discourse around big data here, that they've not figured that out yet. Uh, and I think that's okay. Um, I think, you know, EMC started all off with, you know, big data, big data. Um, we asked Dave Donatelli at the end of, I think it was 2010, you know, what's your big data strategy? He goes, oh, that's a different part of the company. So there, you know, HP took a while to figure it out. So I think Dell needs to sort out the software side of that first. And I think, you know, storage but, will follow. But I will tell you this, Dell for a long time has had a high performance computing center. Interesting. And um, they would basically talk to their customers, the customers would, would, would want a proof of concept, they'd put it together in, in big quantities mm -hmm. in this high performance center, and bring the customer in, and, and they generated lots of sales with that. And that was a, that was a massive investment in, in hardware and software, mm. especially, especially hardware. So my point being is I think they can take infrastructure like that and leverage it when the time is right. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and Nick, and that's a, that tends to be a services-driven solution from Dell. That's what they do for the massive hyperscale environments. Right. So it's just not necessarily trickling down to these infrastructure guys, but architecturally, scale-out architecture, you know, matches well uh, with, with what we're talking about for big data. When we talked to Dario yesterday, you know, the, the network of both virtualization and big data kind of line up well uh, with where Dell's going. So. Well, and Dell is on a lot of trends. Dell's reaching out to the developer community. They're really doing a lot in, in, the, in the area of DevOps. You know, they're big in OpenStack. You know, you can say what you want about OpenStack. I said a lot about OpenStack. I don't think it's really ready for prime time, but the developer community is behind it, and Dell is, you know, very much committed, it seems, to that initiative. So they're doing, a, to your point, Nick, a lot more interesting things today than they were five years ago. Five years ago, Dell was losing its relevance, and I would even argue Dell wasn't relevant five years ago. They certainly weren't part of the discussion, and now, you know, they're a major player, you know, competing at virtually every level. They've got kind of one of everything and they're trying to bring it all together. Absolutely. All right, good, we're here live. Uh, this is day two. Uh, Stu, any closing thoughts on the uh, second day here? So, uh, you know, going to Fenway tonight, uh, to, good to kind of talk about that, that moonshot. Uh, not, not moonshot, uh, I think was HP's term, but the, the Ted Williams, you know, trying to hit the, the longest home run. So, you know, Dell kind of has a vision. They've got <laughs> the red chair sitting out uh, in the bleachers. <laughs> and, uh, you know. I told Darren Thomas there's no actual video footage of that shot, and, and people around here actually don't believe he really hit it that far. It's kind of, you know, urban legend. Mm. But I have my, my chip here, thanks to Stu. <laughs> and I'm going to be trying to hit a homer over the monster tonight at Fenway Park. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, so we're here, you know, Dell has been great. You know, we really couldn't be here without the generous support of, of Dell and our other underwriters, uh, including Legal Seafood. Um, you know, shop.legalseafoods.com. It's Father's Day. They ship all over the world. So, you know, check that out. So uh, appreciate their support. And um, this is theCUBE. We'll be here tomorrow, uh, day three, siliconangle.com, siliconangle TV, uh, cloud angle, social angle, mobile angle, DevOps angle, services angle. Check out all those publications. Uh, check out wikibon.org. Everything is free, it's open, and uh, just trying to you know, help answer questions and promote great information to the practitioner community. Uh, we also have uh, the Hadoop Summit. Uh, which we'll be broadcasting from San Francisco, actually San Jose. Uh, my colleague John Furrier is out there and uh, we got a big crew going there, so you know, we're all over that big data trend and that's the place to be. We just did the HBase Summit, so lots of good things going on. So keep it right here tomorrow. Uh, we start at 10 a.m. East Coast time. I'll be back with Stu and uh, that wraps it up for today. So thanks for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante and we're live from the Dell Storage Forum in Boston. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>